Welcome everybody to our special moments video for 2019. At the beginning of 2019, travelling around um, Australia in our motorhome, Big Kevin. We spent Christmas with family and friends in Tasmania, uh, Little Island of Australia. No, an island of Australia. I descended in Tasmania. She's trying to say Tasmania is an island from off the bottom of the Australian continent. You got that? Anyway, well, I'll, find, I'll find some rubbish and all that put together. We're looking really forward to completing our whole trip around Australia. There's some of South Australia to do and all of Western Australia to do. Um, other than that, we would have travelled from the northernmost point to the southernmost point of Australia to the eastern, which we've done, but we haven't done the western yet. We were travelling along really well. Along the Great Ocean Road. Ocean Road. To the clipping around there and unfortunately I clipped a log going around a tight corner right at a critical point on the motorhome of the construction of the van. We notified our insurance company and had it inspected and he said, that's a write-off mate. And here it was, <coughs> our home. How did you feel about that? Um, I suppose it was utter shock. And we thought, what are we going to do now? Mm. And to all of a sudden be told, no, mate, she's a write-off, was awful, absolutely awful. And we'd spent so <coughs> much time and effort in getting the van to be a long-distance cruising van. So it was a hard pill to swallow, that one. Then, I don't know when it struck with Rick, but then it started coming to me. Oh, maybe we can do this boating journey that we've been wanting to do for years and years and years. And many years. Anyway, so I'm starting to get excited. I'm thinking, oh, how much is insurance for people? Cost? Okay, that's that much. Um, how much have we got? And can we make this work? And then you start looking for boats and you think, oh my God. Oh, that's silly in our price bracket. Then I was watching, Facebook I was looking, I was watching Facebook and lo and behold a boat we'd look at, looked, not actually physically looked at, but looked with interest and even made a phone call just to see, just touching the waters a few years ago and it was the same boat, still for sale or up for sale again, I wasn't sure at that time and within calls and negotiations we finally got a dollar figure that we were both happy with. And Rick hopped on a plane. I think he fell in love with it in some parts and other parts he thought, wow, this is a bit of, a lot of hard work. So our life took a radical turn. I mean, we would have loved to kill, still be exploring in our motorhome, Kevin. Uh, and, around... my, and my mum would prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the girls would prefer that too, actually, would you girls? We arrived in Greece in Corfu in the height of summer. Our fridge has decided to not to work. We met up with this wonderful bloke called George, born in Greece, and in a little town called Venitsa. He came and fixed our fridges. But our, our contact with George doesn't end there. We celebrate Lou's 60th birthday at George's town, mm. but his best friend runs a taverna. And he put on a magnificent feast for it. And uh, George had arranged for the cake for Lou to have a cake. A 60th birthday cake. 60th birthday cake. And it was Wonderful. so special. It was so nice. Another special moment, of course, is when Boy arrived. I was so... Grizzly. Gr so stressed for him that we weren't... Was this the right thing to do? Um, you can't explain that what was going to happen, that he would be on a plane for so long without us, etc. But if we had, were in any doubts, the moment he stepped on board, all of those doubts had gone. It's as if he changed personalities. He embraces this lifestyle even better than motorhome lifestyle. He loves, not, not that he's a swimmer or anything, but he loves going on the boat, he loves going up and down stairs, he loves going to the tender, he just loves the breeze in his ears, he just loves it.
Lou's 60th birthday belatedly at George's friend's taverna and uh, we probably over imbibed on the alcohol a little bit too much. We were about to leave and anyway, guess what? Oh, <laughs> he brings up on a bucket of ice and a bottle of... Oh yeah, another bottle, bottle of champagne. Of champagne. Yeah. And then he had to go back and find our boat. That was interesting. Are you in here? Because I am. And we're off. Let's turn over. That boat's going to be there somewhere. I think we're further out, I reckon. Special moments in Vanessa. Rick had, Rick had two. May I? So small. Hello to everyone in Australia. Say hello. That's freaky. That's a fair income church too. The church wasn't, it was kind of special, I guess. Oh my gosh. But it was. It wasn't there, but it has to be special. It was Freaky Friday. Special moment. Uh, going through the Lifters Canal. The canal only opens every hour well, during when, the time we were there. And so we just missed them on the first. So we had to hang around. So we're the second boat to go through. So meanwhile, everyone's catching up and timing it really well to go through. And then all these suddenly I'd realised, oh, it's all cats that are getting there. And of course, cats were twice the size of a monohull. And they just, because they are twice the size. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it was just like, look out, you literally, here I come. So then we came to? Surrender. Surrender. And we love Albania. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful country, <clears throat> now, Greece, beautiful people. We haven't been in Greece a lot yet. We're yet to really, only in the, more of Corfu and... I suppose we've been a little bit. No, we've been in tourist Greece. Yeah, we've been in tourist Greece. And that's not pleasant. So we, and I think being tourist time, tempers are up, people are a bit frustrated. It's peak of summer, so they're hot. So everyone seemed a little loud um, in Greece, didn't they? They just seemed a little yeah. loud. I don't know if it's like that all the time, but when we arrived, it, in particular, it was. So when we got to Albania, there was this blanket of peace. Sense of calm. Yeah peace and calm now don't know whether it's because it was the close getting to the close of um peak season so that was really maybe that is the reason we've not been there in peak but anyway it was just calm beautiful um all the people we met warm and friendly yeah yeah and a lot of infrastructure needs to be done but they're really doing a lot as well you can see they've come a long way and a not so special moment for the poor people of albania was they got struck with an earthquake, a big one, um, just before Christmas, I think yeah. it was. It was in the mm. weeks before Christmas. And so 52, I think you told me the other yeah, day. Yeah, I think it's about, up just over 50. 50 people, people died. died in that earthquake. Terrible. So our mm. thoughts are with those people. Most of the time we would try Albanian food. But with this particular restaurant that we were anchored close to, and we were using their free Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. we felt obliged, as you most of us do, that do that, um, and make sure you have a meal and um, also a oh, drink or something there. So we had a meal there, but it wasn't a traditionally Albanian food. Uh, I think yours might have been a yes, little bit, but I, I just had prawns, so I mean, you can get them most places. We were the only people there in that bay, mm. the only one. One morning we woke up. Look, started rise, getting up on deck to have our cuppa, and lo and behold, we heard this voice say, "Is that flag New Zealand?" <laughs> Good on you, David. 
and it was David and Mary and from Australia. They came over for dinner that night and as we were leaving we noticed a new, another yacht had pulled in another monohull and we looked I looked at them in the morning and we thought, my gosh, is that an Australian flag? Yes, it was. Because yes, there wasn't much wind blowing. So we were waiting for the wind to blow so we could see whether it was Australian Bridge or New Zealand because they carry a blue one. Yeah. And it was Australian. So now we've got two boats, two Australian vessels and ourselves. So that's three. And then the following night, another catamaran. People we don't really know that well, but... Um, Brian and Brian Christine. Oh, Brian and Christine, but Ryan and Brittany knew them um, from before. And so we all went on their boat. So there were four different yachts on the same boat. The only four, though, that are in the bay were all Australians. Um, whilst we were in Saranda, uh, the people from the, uh, the other Aussies came to visit us. And one of them, who I won't mention their name, wanted to tie up uh, and anyway so I don't know whether you can see on the video yes. we, we just cacked ourselves when we looked at the video because we thought the old saying if you can't tie a knot tie lots tie lots <laughs> on your own <laughs> Ryan really helped us out with his carpentry skills yeah he's a, he's a builder back in Australia so we just we had a little problem with our floor just needed to get some support on it and um, he was building this and he needed a drill. Well, instead of setting up, we didn't have a, the battery was flat on our- Yeah, battery was flat. On our cordless. cordless drill. So he just sent up the old hand drill. Well, Ryan wasn't sure what that was. No, he knew what it was. But what yes, he- He wanted a museum. Because <laughs> he'd seen it in a museum. But what he didn't know how to do, and he didn't have it up there to help him either, was how do you hold two things and a manual Hand drill. Hand drill. How do you make, anyway, you'll see that. Anyway. So we, back in the old days, we used to use clamps, but these days you just use your hand and an electric thing. There's this lovely little taverna on an island in Samil that had closed down for the winter. So we went and took all of our alcohol supplies uh, and we had drinks there with friends. So that was good. And your special moment on that beach was? Oh, this is boy. I mean, he just hadn't been ashore for a while. Like, Saranda's a bit popular, so you can't let him off leash. Um, so, putting him on this beach off leash, he just loved it. So, he went wild and ran around. Cruising the coast of Albania, we could see all these little mushroom pillboxes. Just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Like, of yeah, them. they look like little um, aliens from space games and things sitting in there, don't they? Yeah. they look like that. Um, pack Pac-Mans, if anyone can remember the old Pac-Man. <laughs> anyway, uh, we pulled into this bay and the the mountains around the bay, or the hills around the bay, are just l littered with tunnels. Tunnels, 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 all through and all leading to these pillboxes. Mm. And this one in particular was a supply depot. So the supply ships would come to the little jetty and everything would be stored in that bunker and then, distributed. and then distributed around through all the the, the network of tunnels yeah. that are all over the place. There's Fascinating. Even, yeah, there's even one that would take like a truck. Oh yeah. Yeah. So what you? Yeah, you drive in and out. You could drive in and out of that. So one. saying goodbye to friends and family was harder than we thought it was going to be because we'd already done the little bit of um, weaning ourselves off family going around Australia. We thought it'd be a little bit easier. But it wasn't. To leave and go halfway around the world, yeah. uh, to leave your family and to leave all your dear friends, it was that was very, very tough, very tough. Mm. But I wouldn't change it for anything. But it's still, yeah, it that is, was probably one yeah. of the hardest things that we had to do for 2019. This is where we'll be spending Christmas. We actually don't have Christmas till the. 7th of January. January. Um, so tonight we're going out to celebrate the New Year in uh, with the Montenegrins and... It seems weird to have yeah, we, New Year's and then Christmas. Yeah, and then we're going to have Christmas later. Oh, 
Oh, is it recording? Yes. <laughs> Happy New Year. You got a beer and I've got a punch hot. Hot punch? Hot punch with gin. With gin. And it's very clovey. And you hate clove. clove. So you don't <laughs> breathe in, but it's nice to sip and it's great a hot water bottles. Happy New Year. And next week it'll be Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>